Hello and welcome. In the past, our characters have experienced inconsistencies when exchanging animations in Unreal Engine 5. These issues were often caused by incorrect retargeting workflows, mismatched skeleton structures, or differences in bind poses. In this tutorial, we'll show you how to use the new Unreal preset to export to Unreal Engine with two different motion retargeting methods so your characters can work seamlessly with Unreal's built-in characters. Here in Character Creator 5, we have our character Aaron in the scene. To export this character, let's open the Export FBX menu to view the Target Tool Preset drop-down list. This list includes both Unreal 4 and Unreal 5 options. Select the Unreal UE5 Skeleton Preset and open the Advanced Settings so we can explore some new features. In the Character section, there are two types of epic skeletons, with the UE5 skeleton set as the default. As the name implies, the UE5 skeleton is designed to match the base character in Unreal 5, such as the UE5 mannequin or meta-human. Some changes were made in this version, including two additional spine bones and some added finger bones at the palm. You'll need to switch between Unreal 4 and Unreal 5 characters depending on your target character. Now, let's talk about a major change in the Add Reference Pose section. Here, we have three different bind poses for Unreal. In the past, there was only one base character in Unreal, the UE4 mannequin. However, Unreal has added three other base characters in several recent updates, each with its own unique pose, featuring subtle differences in the shoulders, hands, and fingers. So, we need different bind poses to match these characters. For the UE4 mannequin, we use the A pose for UE4 skeleton. For both the UE5 mannequin and metahuman, since they share a similar pose, we use the A pose for UE5 skeleton. Lastly, UEFN is often used as a game character sample, and for that we have the A pose for UEFN. We'll cover this one in a separate tutorial. These three bind poses are suited to different scenarios, and you can switch between them depending on your needs. For this demonstration, we'll stick with the original UE5 preset. First, let's return to the FBX options and select Mesh and Motion. In the HD Character section, choose Sub-D1, which is great for balancing optimization and quality. Disable Embed Textures, and choose Custom for Include Motion. This allows us to add some CC motions to test retargeting results in Unreal. Finally, export your character and motion to your folder. We can also export Kevin using the UE4 preset to compare the two different versions. By default, this export will use the UE4 skeleton with the A pose for UE4 skeleton setting. This time, just choose Mesh only, and remember to enable Delete Hidden Faces. Before importing your character, make sure you've installed the Unreal Auto Setup plugin. Even though the workflow shown in this tutorial is compatible with Unreal Engine versions 5.4 through 5.6, we'll be focusing on version 5.6 for demonstration purposes. Create a folder for Aaron, then right-click and choose Import to bring in your character. When prompted, select the HQ shader. Be sure to disable Use T0 as Ref Pose and Import Morph Targets if you don't need facial expression editing. This will save time during the import process. Enable Import Animations so the CC motion is brought into Unreal. For animation length, choose Animated Time. Click Import. After a short wait, Auto Setup will process your character, apply its motions, and create retargeting materials we need. Now let's do the same for Kevin. This time, disable the Import Animations option since no animations were exported with this characters. Once both characters are imported, we can compare their skeletons.
It's immediately clear that the two characters use different bind poses. One is tailored for the UE4 mannequin, and the other is compatible with UE5 and metahuman. Let's take a closer look at the bone structures. The UE4 skeleton includes only three spine bones, whereas the UE5 skeleton has five spine bones. There are also differences in hand poses. The UE5 skeleton features additional bones between the fingers and wrist, which help achieve more accurate motion retargeting when working with UE5 characters. From the Preview Animation drop-down menu, we can preview motions imported from Character Creator. While they all appear correct, however, we may also have other motions from Fab that are specifically designed for Unreal characters. So, how can we use those on CC characters? And how do we make CC motions available for Unreal characters? There are essentially two main ways to exchange motions between Character Creator and Unreal Engine. One method works best when the characters share similar bone structures. In the Skeleton Preview window, go to the top toolbar and open the Retarget Manager. Click Add Skeleton to select a compatible skeleton. Fortunately, Aaron's skeleton is fully compatible with UE5 mannequins. You can even add other characters that share the same bone structures. Now open the Preview Animation menu again. You'll notice several new motions have been added. These are from the UE5 mannequin we selected. Let's preview a few. The results look great. Here's another one. You'll notice the details in Fingers animation also looks pretty good. You can also view the skeleton tree and enable show retargeting options to inspect how each bone is retargeted. There are five translation retargeting modes available. The good news is that Auto Setup has already configured these options for us, so no extra adjustments are needed. The UE4 skeleton can be retargeted using the same method. However, its bones are not compatible with the UE5 mannequin. As a result, you'll notice some clear differences when retargeting between the two. That said, retargeting UE4 mannequin animations to Kevin still works well, since their skeletons are compatible. This highlights the importance of choosing the right source skeleton depending on your specific scenario. What if we want to exchange motions between characters with different skeleton structures? That's where the IK retargeter comes in. The Unreal Auto setup automatically creates both an IK rig and an IK retargeter, and we'll now walk through how they work. Open the IK retargeter, and in the Details panel, you'll see the source and target settings. This is where you choose which character provides the source motion, and which one is the target. Previously, setting up retargeting between different skeletons required extensive manual configuration of the IK rig. Now Auto Setup takes care of the hard parts for you. By default, both the source and target are set to the IK rig of current character. All we need to do is assign the source and target characters we want. Adjust the viewport character's offset to get a clearer view. Change the source to metahuman or any character with a different skeleton just make sure it has an IK rig assigned. From the Asset Browser, select an animation from the Source character. Click on an animation to preview it. You can disable Debug Draw for a cleaner view. The retargeting results are quite good. Feel free to test them with various motion clips. Once you're satisfied with the preview, go back to the Asset Browser and click Export Selected Animations. This will bake the retargeted animation onto your target character so you can use it directly in your scene. This workflow also works for Kevin's UE4 skeleton. Simply set the source as the MetaHuman IK rig and the target as Kevin's IK rig, then preview the animation. While this method is great for characters with different skeletons, results may vary due to the bind pose. For example, retargeting from MetaHuman to Kevin's UE4 skeleton may show some slight inconsistencies, especially in the fingers. MetaHuman is best suited for the A-pose used by UE5 skeletons. 
You can also retarget animations from Character Creator to Unreal characters just as easily. For example, to transfer an animation from Aaron to a MetaHuman, simply switch the Source IK rig to Aaron and the target to MetaHuman. The Asset Browser will show all animations exported from Character Creator. You can click and preview them. Once ready, click Export Selected Animations to bake the motion for MetaHuman. You can also check the OpStack panel, which includes many retargeting settings. Auto Setup helps configure these parameters for you, but you're free to tweak things like bone offsets to fine tune the results. After all the retargeting is done, you can now reuse the same animations across different characters. Simply add your character's skeletal mesh to the scene along with a level sequence. When you click on the animation track, you'll see all the animations that have been retargeted and are now available. Thanks to the new Unreal preset and auto setup tools, it's now incredibly easy to exchange animations between characters, whether they share the same skeleton or have completely different ones. And of course, any animation retargeted to a metahuman can be applied to any other metahuman character you own. Moreover, you can easily export the animations back to CC or iClone. Just right-click the animation sequence generated by the IK retargeter, choose Asset Actions, Export, and save it as an FBX file. In CC or iClone, use Import External Motion to apply the FBX animation to your CC characters. You'll also notice a new motion profile, UE5 Skeleton, which ensures the animation works seamlessly with your character. That's it for now. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.